In this video, I want to show how to add distributed tracing to Java EE applications that are deployed to an Istio cluster. Istio itself is a so-called service mesh technology where we have a mesh of microservices of enterprise applications and where we can add technical necessities, technical cross-cutting concerns such as service discovery, monitoring, logging, resiliency, authentication and so on and so forth in a transparent way without affecting each and every application without repeating ourselves all over again. So briefly how that works is if our application is deployed as a container in the cluster in the workload then we can put a second a so-called sidecar container um, to it that will transparently adds as a proxy and will capture all the communication and our application will use that proxy without its, its knowledge and that proxy can then add all these um, all these extra concerns. So how we use this here is that we have two applications, two Java E applications that are called Instrument Craft Shop and a second external system, a so-called MakerBot. So we have a Craft Shop where we craft uh, music instruments, and then we have a 3D printer external system where we can then print these instruments. So here we only have the Java E7 API. These are Java E7 projects deployed to Liberty, in our case, Open Liberty. And briefly how that works is just from the business code perspective that if we want to create a new instrument, we do so as a client using a JAXOS resource using an HTTP endpoint. And that, well, internally uses a so-called MakerBot system and system endpoint where we do an HTTP lookup using JAXRS client and we basically connect against this this um, URI the MakerBot hostname and port 9080 and then well we simply invoke that system and that will be returned to the client so now in order to add distributed tracing, what is left to us and what's quite important is that we provide some further information once we do the client call. So if our first system gets called and our sidecar proxy container can add a couple of concerns, for example, HTTP headers using correlation IDs, then we actually have to pass the correct correlation IDs to each and every call that is part of that chain, part of that trace. Otherwise, we cannot correlate this information later on. And this is what needs to be added to our system. So if you had a look at the documentation of Istio, how the distributed tracing works, then you will see later on that, for example, for the Zipkin integration, we can show the spans as follows. If we add all that information, basically all these HTTP header information to well, each and every request that we make in our system. So also for the client call later on. So how we solve this, because we do not want to add all this information, this is a lot of technical information that I would argue should not be part of the application since our application should only concern itself with business logic, with something that adds value to well, the business domain that we're, trying, that we're trying to solve, that we're trying to improve. So instead what we do, we use a micro profile Java e ex, um, extension open tracing together with in my case open liberty here that well can add a couple of things for example we could use an api inside our application to also trade uh, trace method calls but what i'm interested uh, here much more is actually trace all the external boundaries all the ingress and egress traffic um, into and from the system and in order well to add this we basically have to install it into the Open Liberty um, base image. So what we do here, you can have a look at uh, this guide on GitHub. We add the feature to our Open Liberty um, server, and that works as follows: that this will be part of the Docker image. So what we do here, since our application should run in the cluster, it needs to run in a container. So we have to have a Docker file here that in my case uses um, a base image from my own docker hub repository open liberty and then we install this in this case sipkin implementation and also we use the server xml configuration that i have here that adds all these features for java 7 micro profile open tracing and then this zipkin implementation as well 
and that well, enables us to provide all these information in a transparent way without changing our replication. So basically what it does here is that it provides all this information that originally comes in into the system and then provides all this well into the client call. And in order to showcase this, I will actually extend this application here. And just for us, for insights, I will lock all the headers that come in into the system from the HTTP request. So what we do here is that we well lock all the headers to come in and later on that we can see that we, that we can validate that all the correlation IDs are correct. If we do a single request, the both systems actually have to lock that information and then we as humans can compare them. So let's say request get header names. We should get all the header names that comes from the HTTP request and these header names, well, unfortunately are old uh, enumeration um, style um, style type. So we header, we have to um, loop over them in this way. Request get header for a specific um, header and we want to, well, print that. So let's say our header should be this information. And that's that's it, just just for the sake of insights to lock it. In a second system, the MakerBot system, that's even simpler. We also have a resource for the jobs where we can lock that information for an incoming request. So we also lock the headers from our request that will be added with the add context annotation into our JAX arrest resource method. And then we can lock all the requests, um, all the request headers of an incoming request. So in order to try this out, in order to deploy this, what we have to do first is to build our projects and then to distribute a Docker image to the cluster using, um, using a Kubernetes deployment. Docker builds, to a specific name, I will use a private um, Docker registry server to distribute it and to pull it later on from my Kubernetes environment. Um, Docker push as well. So we push this and you already see, well, this is the reason why I use a thin deployment ap um, approach with the copy, a copy and write file system um, layer from, from Docker. I only have to transmit what has been changed and my WAR file is super small since all the implementation is done in the application server, in the Java E server. And the same is true for the open profile extension that just has been activated in my server. And I don't well, have to ship more implementation where I'm actually not interested in because what I'm shipping, the last layer, should only be the business logic that my application is trying to solve. And that is tiny and therefore it's super fast to add this. So my deployment, that is my Kubernetes deployment that will be deployed to my Kubernetes slash Istio cluster that deploys a deployment and a service and also an ingress. And what this does, let's deploy these two things for now for both the MakerBot system and the instrument craft job. So if we look into that, it will deploy, well, same story here, a deployment, a service and an ingress for the MakerBot system. The same is true for the instrument craft job. And if we look into the MakerBot, then we see that, well, this is the same story. We have a deployment using one container here and a service where the service name MakerBot actually matches the URI that we called in the first place from our instrument craft shop gateway. So we use the uh, URI, that logical service name MakerBot with port 9080 and nothing else. We did not add any other constraints in our or any other concerns in our application code. We simply say call that system. Everything else, including tracing here in this case, will be added from well, from the environment, from the cluster, from my Istio technology here. So if I look into this right now, then it should be already starting up. That is my cluster where I have the pod. And you can see that actually internally it has two containers, not just one, although we only specified one, the main container. What it does that 
Istio transparently adds a second container, and if we have a, ask our cluster, cube control, get parts, please give me the parts of another namespace, the Istio system namespace, and we see, well, we have a so-called sidecar injector, and that is actually responsible to add the second container without our knowledge. That is done transparently. We do not have to specify that, not even in the deployment YAML in our Kubernetes descriptor files. If we now see if that, yes, is up and running, we can ask for the ingresses that we just deployed as well, and then I can query that address, for example, for the instrument craft shop. And the default resource name from JAXRS is resources. Then I have a health check response here that says, OK, this works. And then I can query and, well, actually not query, but create a new instrument here using, well, post. So I'm posting a new JSON to my instrument craft shop. And that, and this is now the interesting story, will issue that business logic will invoke that business logic that internally issues the second system the makerbot system within the same original request within the same trace but um, it's a new span in that very trace and we will have a look at that in our in our tracing solution later on so if if you want to see how that works you can have a look at the github project i'm actually creating a new guitar with a specific price, let's say $100. And that call goes to the first system that internally calls the second system and then hopefully says two or four no counted, an instrument has been created. And we can have a look at the log files, of course, but also the tracing in our SIPKIN system. So that is the SIPKIN um, tracing system that comes from Istio, that runs in our Istio cluster. And if we search for, let's say, the newest trace that has been issued from the instrument craft shop system, that actually we see already a span here that has been made before where we went to the first system, the instrument craft shop, using a so-called default route that is part of Istio. And that also calls a second system. So the default route name, well, that is created between all the services per default, but we can also create our own route rules that look very similar to Kubernetes resources. And actually it's a Kubernetes extension, so-called route rule. And it's, well, it's a best practice to add these route rules for our systems to per default have a, uh, a route to all these services. So let's do this. We add this for the Istio subfolder, kubectl apply deployment Istio subfolder. And the nice story about that is that we can use the kubectl command line tool to also add, well, resources that originally not are not part by Kubernetes. These come from Istio, but, uh, but still we can query for, well, route rules, for example, and now it will show us the default route rules here. And if we then issue a new request we can say, okay, now please find the traces, the newest traces for that system. And that already uses, well, the specific route rules, instrument craft shop default and MakerBot default for our system. So that works and it will correlate all the information here. So now that's interesting. Let's look into the log files if we would not believe that actually all this information is trans, uh, transferred. So this is, the reason why this already works. So if we would not provide all the header information, then we would not see the trace and this, uh, the traces and the specific spans. So that this very request within the MakerBot system is actually part of that bigger trace. So let's have a look at the log files. First of all, for our instrument craft shop part. And since we are running multiple containers here, we would actually have to specify the container where we want our main container, our actual application running. And then we can see cube control logs of our MakerBot. That couple of information has been, has been locked. And the last one should be a trace ID 2671. And here in that request, we see that request has the same trace ID and a different span ID. That makes sense because it's the same overall trace, but a different span within that trace.
So here we see that is the log for our instrument craft shop system. That should be the original request ID 81 and so on and so forth. And if I open the correct one, yes, we see that here in our tracing system, that is the very trace we are looking at right now. So I added this log information just to be sure, just to validate that we're actually passing all these HTTP header information. And that comes now from the open profile, my, um, open tracing micro profile extension that has been added to our application server. And now again, the point is that we want to add all, all these cross cutting concerns without affecting our application. That is now the idea behind service meshes. So it's quite similar actually to the original idea of Java EE. We want to add our business logic to our application, to the Java code. Everything else is part of, well, the environment that before only was the application server. So all the application servers provide the implementation to, uh, to what we actually want to do. We only code against APIs in Java EE. And now service meshes take that idea further and include further technical cross-cutting concerns that are required in cloud-native applications, in cloud-native environments, such as monitoring, uh, tracing, um, service lookup, as you saw, we can add resiliency, we can add timeouts, circuit breakers, and so on and so forth, all to these route rules, because now the proxy container, the second sidecar container that is running, can take care all of, of all of that, and our application, well, does not need to care Right, so we're simply issuing an HTTP call to that to that endpoint. We're not doing an HTTPS call. Only HTTP authentication and uh, security can be added by that proxy container as well. And the same is true for circuit breakers and resilient calls. Everything else will be done from the outside from our Istio cluster. So you can have a look at the documentation for Istio. I recommends to have a look at that for distributed tracing and especially also for the, all the other concerns and you can have a look at the instrument craft job uh, project on github thanks for watching